know there kid is, I'm Kari, the vacuum tube witch. And today I've got an antique electronic device. Wanna know what it is? Let's do a little teardown and walk through because I've got it reverse engineered by now. To the vent. So we've got this uh, AEG old German uh, type ZSG 05WS. This is a time relay, <coughs> an uh, industrial automation component. And let's get a closer look. We've got the <laughs> time uh, adjustment potentiometer. We've got a uh, calibration potentiometer. This device is meant for work with uh, 220 volts AC, but it might as well work with um, 220 volts uh, DC. It has a large uh, capacitor. It has a potentiometer for, for adjusting the time the calibration pot, of course the, the relay. And what is most interesting about it is the two tube bases. Both tubes are shielded and let's take a look what's underneath the shield. <coughs> if we take a closer look at the tube uh, we can uh, we can see that uh, it doesn't have the heater. <coughs> this is uh, in fact a uh, neon. Uh, this is in fact uh, the neon uh, voltage uh, regulator tube, like zero D two or something like that. Then the markings on uh, on the bulb, uh, they are they are damaged uh, beyond repair. So uh, there's no way of uh, determining the exact type of the tube without uh, without doing any measurements. There's also another tube with with slightly different internal construction and uh, from what I from what I determined this tube is a firetron it also has a uh, cold cathode and uh, with tubes uh, taken out uh, we can see the leads uh, of the time potentiometer we can also see the something like a a block uh, underneath the potentiometer. It has some markings on it, clearly made by uh, AEG, and this is in fact a selenium uh, four bridge rectifier. So let's put those tubes back in place. They use uh, heptor bases. There's also a 50 milliamp fuse. And looking at the bottom of the enclosure, we have a cover plate. And it's time for a little teardown. Lifting the cover plate reveals a few resistors and an uh, electrolytic capacitor. The electrolytic is Three microfarad uh, 450 
volts on DC working, 550 volts peak. We've got high wattage resistors. One of them is in line with with the power. This is uh, 820 ohms. <coughs> the other one is uh, 8.2 uh, kilo ohms. And since I uh, already reverse engineered this device, let's take a look at the schematic. To see what exactly is happening after we switch the device on. So here is the full bridge rectifier that provides the DC voltage for the whole unit. This is the current limiting resistor. And uh, at, uh, at the initial state, uh, then the current flows uh, through the 8.2K resistor here and the voltage regulator tube to the ground, limiting the voltage uh, on, the, on the plate. I don't uh, know the exact value yet, but I will measure it. And this, uh, the plate voltage is uh, taken as the constant uh, reference voltage uh, for the time circuits. Yes, the time circuits. <laughs> and uh, this is the calibration part, the 100K, that uh, adjusts the, the voltage. It, uh, it allows us to calibrate uh, the time so that if, uh, if it points uh, to 3 seconds, then it's actually 3 seconds and not 5 and not 10. <laughs> and then we've got uh, a jumper between the, the pin number four, 4 and 5. This jumper is... Uh, is here. Removing it allows us to add an, an additional enable pin if we want to use some uh, additional relay logic uh, then uh, putting a relay contact uh, instead of this pin will uh, allow us to to measure the time only when uh, when the contact is made here. And uh, the big potentiometer, the, the something like uh, 3 mega ohms, together with the 2 microfarad uh, capacitor, forms a, uh, a uh, time constant uh, circuit. And as the capacitor is uh, charging, when it uh, when it uh, achieves uh, a certain uh, threshold value, it will uh, cause uh, the ignition of the firetron. Then the firetron will start conducting. And uh, current will flow through the relay coil. One, uh, one thing worth of noting is that uh, before the Firetron fires, one half of the coil is, uh, is uh, bypassed. So uh, the current uh, will flow through half of the coil. Then it will flow through the brake uh, contact on the relay and the firetron, causing the relay to switch on. And after it switches on, it will stay latched uh, because of uh, this contact being changed over to the ground and the full uh, 
applied uh, supply voltage will be applied to the coil. This uh, contact will uh, turn off the voltage regulator tube. Because uh, it will take the ground uh, away from this point. And at the same time, it will discharge the capacitor through a small value resistor that's uh, 1K. <coughs> so uh, if we turn off the relay and uh, activate it again, there is no risk of uh, of uh, charge staying in the capacitor and uh, shortening the delay time. So now it's time to connect the time relay and test it. I will take off the, <coughs> the shields uh, of the tubes and turn off the light. Plug it in. And uh, since the supply is switched, I will flip the switch and uh, Pay close attention to what is happening <coughs> to the top of the tubes. What's happening when the Fagertron fires? You will hear the, the relay uh, kicking in. The voltage regulator tube is glowing. And now the Fagertron fired. It's pretty badly discalibrated. So uh, let's try again uh, resetting the calibration pot. This should make the time a little bit shorter. Fired. You may have seen the the fire on uh, starting to glow for a very short moment. Maybe if I pull those tubes uh, away, like a millimeter or so. You may have seen the pulse of, uh, of uh, purple glow. So now I will measure the the voltage on the voltage regulator tube. <coughs> Watch your eyes, please. The light is coming back. I have to be quick before before the relay kicks in. I'm gonna grab the ground. So, turning off the power. This is a 150 volts voltage regulator tube. And after the after the tube is uh, disconnected. I, uh, I measured between uh, the plate and the ground, not uh, across the tube. 
It was uh, across the tube, only in the initial state. <coughs> so uh, after after the relay uh, kicked in, this was cut off, and uh, here I have the 219 volts because um, the rest of uh, the rest of the circuit is uh, is just uh, cut off and uh, the the voltage drop uh, would be very insignificant uh, then the voltage drop on this resistor would be very insignificant because uh, in this state uh, something like one and a half uh, mega ohm uh, resistance uh, to the ground is uh, vastly larger than uh, 8k2 so I may safely assume that uh, that uh, here I've got uh, 220 volts DC thanks to the current uh, limiting resistor and that would be it for this little antique electronics device. I will keep it as a uh, certain uh, museum piece. <coughs> I've got quite a few curiosities uh, Electronic curiosities um, of um, of this sort uh, still waiting for teardown and reverse engineering. So I will keep those videos coming. See you next time.